let's transform some IKEA items into functional bedroom decor. Hi, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. Today we are tackling two IKEA hacks that are centered around decor that you can use in your bedroom. And I know you're going to love these projects just as much as I do. And I also wanna say a thank you to today's video sponsor, Ana Luisa. I'll have more on them a little bit later on, but we've got a lot of work to do, so let's get started. Really? This is the Ikea Tarva nightstand. It goes for $70 at Ikea. It's the perfect blank canvas for a custom DIY. So first things first, we have to get this assembled. assembly wasn't too bad. I think it took me around an hour to get the entire nightstand put together. Now that I have you here, let's talk about my inspiration. I was inspired by these nightstands that you see on the screen, but in particular, this one right here for $500 at West Elm, you can find this nightstand and I was not about to pay $500 for a nightstand and I knew that I could make this DIY way easier as an Ikea hack. To get started on the DIY, I first filled the knob of the drawer with some wood filler, let it dry, and then sanded it smooth. Now it's time to prime the wood of this nightstand. Since the Tarva nightstand is a really soft and grainy type wood, you're not going to want to skip priming. I recommend the Zinzer multi-purpose primer, and I only did one coat for this nightstand, but I really wish I would have done two because of how absorbent this piece is. After letting the primer dry for an hour, it is time to move on to the painting. I wanted to save as much money as I could for this project, so I already had this quart of paint that I used for my 100% removable board and batten wall, the one you see behind me right here. And if you haven't checked out that video, I definitely recommend you go do that after watching this one. It's Gallery White by Valspar, and I gave the entire cabinet a coat of the paint using a roller intended for cabinets and doors. This will give you a really nice smooth and even finish. And I really like the look that this style roller gives, especially when I'm working on furniture projects. And then in areas where the roller couldn't reach, like in the corners of the nightstand, I made sure to use a brush to cut in the corners and make sure everything had a nice even coat. I let that paint dry for a couple of hours before adding a second coat and then a third coat. While that paint dries, I want to talk to you about today's video sponsor, which is Ana Luisa. This is my second time working with them, and I can honestly say that I wear their jewelry all the time. Even my camera guy can vouch for me. <laughs> So these are the pieces that I picked out this time. I chose the Hannah necklace, Rowena bracelet, and Paris earrings. And I just love how dainty and elegant each of these pieces are. They really match my personality, and I think they're super versatile as well. I can wear them to work, I can wear them with a casual outfit, or I can also wear them while I'm DIYing. I can also say that I had a really hard time narrowing down which pieces I wanted because I love everything on their website. Ana Luisa makes high quality jewelry at affordable prices with pieces starting at $39. I also love that the company is committed to being sustainable and is 100% carbon neutral, which is super important to me. And right now for the month of March, Ana Luisa is offering 20% off everything site-wide. I put my special link in the description box for you to check out Ana Luisa. I know you'll love Ana Louisa as much as I do and I can't wait to show you how these pieces inspired one of my DIYs that's later on in the video. It's a new day and it's time to get more work done on this project. Now the next thing I wanted to do was add a little bit of trim around the drawer front. That is not what the inspiration photo looks like. However, I thought this would be a really nice touch to make this my own unique piece instead of upholstering the drawer front completely like the West Elm piece I'm trying to recreate. I purchased this three quarter inch trim from Lowe's and I cut it down using my miter saw to form a frame. I'll put the measurements that I used on the screen right here. Can you do batons? 
run out of room for baton twirling. And once the pieces were cut, I hit them with a couple coats of the gallery white paint. Now for the fabric portion on the drawer, I picked up this upholstery fabric from Hobby Lobby because I was in love with the color and texture. I looked all over at a ton of different ones, and this is what I landed on because I thought that the texture and the look of it looked very high-end and expensive and mimicked the look of the raffia fabric that was on the West Elm dresser. I used my rotary cutter to cut the fabric, and then applied spray adhesive to the back and let it set up for 15 seconds, eyeballed how to center it on the drawer front and pressed it into place. Now there are a number of different ways that you could apply the trim pieces to the drawer front, but I opted to use E6000 glue, which is an industrial strength glue. I applied the glue to the back of each piece and then clamped each piece down into place until it dried. And now we're on to the finishing touches, the hardware. I picked up these gorgeous eight inch metal legs off Amazon that perfectly match with my inspo and I'll be sure to link them in the description box if you wanna check them out as well. And to go along with it, this drawer pole had the exact shape as my inspiration photo as well. And since the metals obviously don't match, a good hack for you to use is just some spray paint. I gave all the hardware two coats of antique gold spray paint and let it dry completely. And then after it was all dry, all that's left to do is get that hardware attached. And now I can reveal to you the final product. So how do you think I did? I am very happy with how this nightstand turned out and it only cost me $150 to make. All right, moving on to the next DIY. When I saw this hidden jewelry frame organizer storage thing on Pinterest, I knew I could recreate it and I already had the perfect base that I purchased from Ikea to make it. So I'm gonna be using this 12 by 16 Ribba frame, which was $10 at Ikea, and it's going to work perfect because the image sets sort of forward in the frame, and then there's plenty of room behind it for that secret storage that we're creating. So first up, you're going to wanna to remove everything so that all you have is the frame. Now I painted the inside of the frame with some white acrylic paint to cover up that MDF sort of material that it's made out of, but you could leave it as is if you wanted to. Now obviously this frame is going to need a backing, so I picked up a really cheap piece of plywood at Lowe's and I had an employee cut it down to 13 by 17 inches for me, which is the total size of the frame so that they would match up. And then since it was dark outside, I didn't feel like getting out the large miter saw, so I used my mini miter saw instead, which I'll link below, to cut the dowels into four pieces to frame out the plywood, and then just use some wood glue and clamps to attach them all into place and let that glue dry. I 
I then painted the entire frame and the outside edge of the plywood with that same white paint. Then it was time to make the little organization pieces. I used some scrap wood and scrap dowel that was cut down to 12 inches to make each of those pieces. I wanted to make a piece to hold necklaces, a piece to hold bracelets, and a piece to hold some dangling earrings. And I also painted all of those white just so everything would match. Next up, I removed the hanging hardware off the back of the frame, and then I took some black felt, cut it to size to cover the back of the frame, and another piece to cover the inside of the plywood. And then you're going to want to use a generous amount of hot glue to adhere the felt to both of these backing pieces so that they will hold the jewelry organizing pieces in place and keep them nice and secure and give them lots of support. Now to finish those pieces off, I added tiny little screw hooks to the necklace holder and a tip to make it easier for you. If you use a screwdriver after you get those hooks started, it makes it way easier, gives you way more leverage to get those screws in. So I took that necklace holder piece and I attached it to the top of the plywood frame. And then what I did was roll up four rolls of just some colored felt because then I covered it up with black felt that would match the backing of the frames and hot glue goes into place at the bottom of the one plywood piece right up next to each other because this creates a ring holder or a place where you can also store some stud style earrings. Then if you remember that square dowel, I added a gold hook to each end and this means you'll be able to add a 12 inch thin dowel to hold some dangling earrings into place and I glued that down right above the ring holder. Then on the frame backing, I attached the bracelet holder and a small round mirror I picked up at the craft store. Now we're gonna wanna bring both of those two pieces together. And of course the easiest way to do this is with hinges. So I marked and measured where I wanted the hinges to be placed on the top and bottom of the frames and then drilled pilot holes and screwed on the hinges. And finally, I added some hanging hardware to the back, and now I can get these Ana Luisa pieces organized and in their new home. A big thank you once again to Anna Luisa for sending me the jewelry to style in this organizer and of course wear every day. You can learn more about their lovely jewelry at the link in my description box. If you want to check out even more IKEA hacks that I made, then you'll want to click on this video right here, or you might also enjoy this video. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Stay crafty, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!